This is Alara of Sirius, and you're watching One Foot in 5D. I am talking with Steven Cefalo today. He is the, um, well, he was trained as an oil painter, but he is currently the, um, the graphic novel artist for Corey Good um, for his graphic novels that have not been out, have not been released yet, but will be soon, That's correct, right. Steven? Well, it depends on what soon is. Um, so they, they were, they, they were uh, originally, you know, I, I guess technically they're kind of a, over a year late, um, uh -huh. but uh, for very good reasons. And, and uh, they were supposed to be released again. They were announced to be released this fall, but they will not be. Um, then the new, uh, the new release date has been moved toward uh, spring 2020. That's cool. So the reason, the reason that it got delayed like that, was that because of like, did I see something about legal battles, lawsuits, something of that nature? Yeah, the number of things. So, um, you know, without going into boring details, um, there were uh, some legal disputes with Marvel um, um, concerning the use of certain words in, um, in, in our titles. Um, and the, the project just sort of, keeps changing hands. So the, the management kind of keeps changing. Um, and, but, but I want to sort of assure everybody that it's going in a better and better direction. So, so any delay that happens is because we're making a better and better graphic novel and a better uh, sort of springboard for the other entertainment projects that are, that are going to be uh, growing out of the graphic novel project. That's cool. Well, can you give us like a little bit of a sample of what that could be? What what areas are going to be? Sure. Next? Yeah. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, without saying too much, um, just, we, just more and more interesting people are coming out of the woodwork and wanting to get involved with the project. So that's on a graphic novel level, um, as well as uh, other uh, television um, and, uh, and film projects uh, that, that uh, are going to sort of uh, yeah, extend from the graphic novel. And the, the graphic novel from the beginning was, was uh, the, the idea was for it to be kind of a storyboard for, to, to create a film um, out of, and the, 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 the graphic novel is gonna serve as sort of concept art for a film project um, you know, film slash TV. I think it's going to be um, on. Uh, uh, I think it may be released on Netflix or or, or maybe um, maybe even done in in uh, uh, in uh, uh, like with Netflix. You know, with uh, uh, um, as like a Netflix original. Uh, but really? I don't want to say that. Yeah, I don't want to say that um, and not be right or uh, or not having s s uh, permission to say it. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. But that's it. what I understand. Um, and and, I'm, and um, partly I'm not supposed to say certain things and partly um, I just, I, uh, I, I, I know that a lot of things are, are kind of in flux. And, I'm, and they don't tell me a lot. So I think, I think as the artist, I'm kind of, they're just keeping me on track, um, finishing this graphic novel. So what do you get? Just, do you, you just get little chunks of the project to do at a time? Is that how you work? Is that why you don't really have full knowledge of the big picture all the time? Is that how it works? Yeah, I just think it's not my business. Um, oh. My business is to create a graphic novel oh. and um, it's, it's somewhat, I, I'd say the information is somewhat um, compartmentalized and, uh, and I'm just sort of given my task and, and my job is to make the coolest graphic novel I can possibly make uh, cool. with, the, with the idea that it's probably gonna be made, interpreted into a, a film or a TV project. How did you, I'm really dying to know, how, how did you meet Corey Good and hear his story and, and get to know him to the point where you would start working for him as an artist? Yes, okay, so essentially my whole life I've been I've been crazy about all these topics. Um, you know, I've been obviously known about all of them, uh, uh -huh. but, but at, I remember when I was a kid, 
whenever it's a library, it always go for the books on Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot and ghosts and UFOs. And it's just always been, yeah, me too. It's always been like, <laughs> give me the weird stuff. And yeah. it just must be true. Um, <laughs> and, and so, uh, and so I think like I've, I, around like 2001, I went down the, the John Teeter rabbit hole, if anybody remembers that. Um, the to John Teeter time traveler, uh, which was kind of a sensation on the early internet. Um, and, uh, you know, every once in a while I'd go down time travel rabbit holes. And I think um, when, when I was working after my divorce, like I, I kind of like went off the deep end and rabbit holes to like, uh, to keep out of like boredom and sadness. <laughs> and, uh, and I was working, I was, so I was working as a, a painter for a uh, big time pop artist in New York City and we're at, at one point we're working around the clock to make these giant 12 foot like five million dollar paintings in mm -hmm. this painting factory and um, so uh, like I'm, I'm like falling asleep on the scaffold making paintings and I have to I have to stay awake so I'm listening to the weirdest stuff that I can uh, I started I started going down uh, listening to every single Carrie Cassidy episode um, <laughs> And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm writing down all the names of the people I'm listening to. And uh, somewhere down the line, I came across, um, I guess I came across David Wilcock. And then when, uh, and then when I came across David, I had to get his audio books. And then when I heard the Corey thing, I was like, that is, that is the craziest thing. I've ever <laughs> and so, uh, I eventually decided to get, uh, like I'm scream laughing, you know, listening to this stuff. And, um, and so, uh, because just, because I think it's so cool, you know, and at first I think it's funny. And then I'm like, wait a minute, there's, there's something to this. And so, uh, as soon as I, I, uh, like I'm writing notes down and then as, as soon as I realized there was a show, I had to get Gaia and then, uh, and then so, then it was over. Then I started following Corey on Twitter. And, um, and then when they mentioned the graphic novel project, I was like, that is mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to get this because I know I can do it. I know I can do it right. And, and I just have so much passion to, you know, to get Corey's vision in on, uh, on paper. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I, so I kept, um, DMing them on Twitter and say, please just let me do like some free work for you. Um, and and uh, so I, I started doing free work for them and, and I started doing stuff for like Michael Sala and people and just like over delivering, yeah. like pulling all nighters to make the coolest work that I could for them. And then eventually they asked me to do it, the graphic novel. That's cool. Yeah. I was cracking up because that's so that story, you know, just what we were talking earlier about the soul family thing. It's so, I did the same, literally the same thing, like <laughs> different people in different order, but like the same thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just so funny to me because it's so like exactly what we were talking earlier. It's the soul family thing. It's weird. You just, you're obsessed and yes. you don't know why, where it comes from and you can't make it go away. <laughs> yeah. And you just can't. And the more you, the more you, layers you pull back the deeper you get lost in it and you're just gone mm -hmm. there's no there's no going back to the regular world <laughs> yeah i have those moments where i'll be just out wherever and i'll just start some deep stuff will start coming in man and i'm just standing there just trying to process it take it in you know and i and i could see other people looking at me like Wow. Somebody even said the other day, I want some of what she's on. I was like, and, they, and the crazy thing is they know I'm sober. So uh -huh. it's kind of the running joke, right? I want some of what she's on. It, it's just, I don't know. It's like that somebody shared, um, it's like that meme, I think Matthew Mornians shared, um, which was uh, a wizard on a subway and it says me going anywhere. <laughs> a wizard yeah. with, a, with a big cone hat. Yeah, that's funny. I like that. That's totally, it's totally true. But it's just, I don't know, waking up was so dramatic for me. Like, I, Stephen, like, I could see 
that everything was connected and alive and conscious. I could just see it one day. And I was like, yeah. whoa, you know what I mean? For like a couple months, I had my, I had like rave music in on my headphones. And I, all I did was just walk yeah. around in nature, listening to rave yeah. music, dead sober. That's how yeah. I was just poof, on a new level yeah. that fast. Yeah. It was just... I don't know. What now, was it like for you waking up? What was your awakening or were you always kind of awake or what was your awakening like? Always kind of like, um, uh, yeah, always kind of awake, weird experiences as a kid. Um, and then, uh, as an adult though, it came, it came through the divorce process. Like it came through, like it was, I went through three years of, of near suicidal depression just I did not want to live. And, um, and then there came like a point where it was like, something's got to give. And, um, and I don't know, it was like a number of events happening at the same time. And, um, and something just snapped. And this overwhelming feeling of love and goodness came over me. And I saw everything in a new light. And so it was like, even during the depressed times, I was going through rabbit holes, like looking for fun topics and things like that. But I think, I think there was a letting go of all of the meaning of everything. It was like, it was like uh, all of a sudden, none of it mattered and anything could happen I'd, and I'd be okay. And I think that's kind of when the, when the awakening happened. Yeah, I think I think my, oh. my mine was similar. I was in the middle of my dark night of the soul. Same thing, just serious depression. Didn't care if I lived or died. Mm. I was done. If this was all there was, I was done. Yeah. And um, luckily <laughs> for me, shortly after that, before I really did, um, it, you know, I had this dramatic awakening experience and began to see everything for what it was and learn the truth. You know, That's right. begin to you fight for it. Like that. You said yeah. something about almost referring to your former self as a different person, even. Yeah, well, she was. Uh -huh. Literally, but it's, it's, it's more complicated. I don't mean the one that woke up. I mean, there's two distinct portions of my life, and they're two distinctly different people. And I believe I understand now why that is. Hmm. But, uh, but I think that's kind of not exactly related to the other, to the other thing, you know? Yes, yes. So, okay. yeah, I don't know. You know, every day I'm still trying to figure things out, aren't you? Every day. Trying, and I, I feel like I'm never going to have it figured out. There's no figuring it out. No, I guess. the whole thing is, the whole thing is like what I just, something just came to me yesterday and it's in, okay, what did it say? It said, it said, oh, wait. <laughs> nothing okay there, okay there's no nothing is i can't even remember what it was but it's something about that it, it's something related to that um uh, that old saying that you can't step in a river the same river twice because it's not the same river and it's not this or no no man steps in the same river twice because it's not the same river it's not the same man but but everything's always changing mm -hmm. and and no two things are alike there's no, there's no comparisons between things because because the things are always changing mm -hmm. you, nobody's experience uh, can be related to another person's experience because because uh i can't remember the, <laughs> this this amazing thing came to me and i can't remember it but that's what's that's, so amazing about all of it honestly it's just everybody's awakening it, and their path is totally unique. Yes. You know? yes. It's the creator. It's right. Trying to fit, understand. I don't know. Yeah, That's I, the way I, I see it now. Right. Just the fact that you don't know anything is the most wondrous uh, <laughs> fact um, imaginable. And you don't have to know anything. Just be it and flow with it. Mm -hmm. Just be yeah, I understand now. I used to suffer with bad anxiety, and I know now why I did, because I was never present in the moment. I was always living in the future of the past, and it was causing me anxiety. 
the moment yeah. I stopped doing that, the anxiety went away. Right. Yeah, it reminds me of this, uh, like Alan Watts saying something like, whatever you are right now, is that, that's what you are. Like, I'm not Steve, the graphic novel artist. I'm just Steve talking to Alara. Right. Like right now, that's all I am. I'm not Steve that uh, doesn't know how I'm going to make rent or uh, right. Steve that uh, uh, whatever uh, stressful things in my life. Uh, I'm just I'm just here now, right? Being this guy. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful to get to that place where you can do that. I I can't wait till. You know, we are we are like that in mass. We're present mm -hmm. and aware, right. and you know, can just be in that space with each other and just just be. Yeah, and I do think as, as much as like we feel we feel like aliens compared to the world around us i think more and more just people you're meeting more and more people who are speaking this way family members and friends that are that are kind of going something comes on and they start talking like this too mm -hmm. and and i think i was just i was just talking to my friend earlier today about how i think like okay like my my friend um her dad is in the hospital and and was talking about oh I met this guy who uh, or my friend he he uh, he knows about the alien stuff that Steve talks about <laughs> and, uh, and and I'm hearing that all the time like oh I have this friend who knows about that stuff and it's going to get to a tipping point where everybody knows about all of it and then the whole consciousness changes it's not just about the the aliens but you see like even um, you go to, to Walmart or places and they have uh, sayings on their t-shirts that are kind of, kind of woke. Like kind of woke, yeah. diet, diet woke t-shirts right, exactly. at Walmart. Okay, yeah, but, let's go there. It's kind of like infiltrating culture. Right. You know, maybe getting a watered down version, but uh, you can see it's kind of leaking, kind of seeping into the mainstream. Yeah, it's it's getting there. I mean, I was shocked to see that Corey was going on Jenny McCarthy. I was like, right? yeah. what? Where did that come from? And then um, there's this picture of uh, Corey hanging out with like Smokey Robinson. <laughs> and it turns out Smokey Robinson is a Corey Good fan. Like what? <laughs> right. It's so it's, cool. Yeah, that is so cool. It, it makes my little heart go pitter patter. I love that. I I'll, I will love to, I don't think we're going to have like movie theaters in the future very far off. And I think once Hollywood kind of goes down, like I don't, mm -hmm. I don't see us, I don't know, but I don't know anything. Okay. But mm -hmm. I mean, maybe we will for a while. Where was I going with that? I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> I did exactly what you did earlier. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, <laughs> do you remember what I was talking about? Um, no, I don't. Oh, but I, <laughs> let me find this quote. I'm going to, I'm going to find this quote while you're trying to remember. I remember who I'm I not going to be able to remember. I got one foot in 5D, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> one foot in 5D. Yeah. That's what I'm convinced it is. That's why we get, we get all like, like, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm an airhead sometimes, but that's why I think <laughs> yeah. I'm just not connected it. I don't know. Maybe I need to ground, but I feel like I'm just not connected into this level of the game anymore just not not oh it. okay here's what i said okay here's my quote i said things are what they are in each moment and no two things are the same that was the oh. that was the little things are what they are in each moment and no two things are the same so like the things are always changing and they're never like each other. They're never like each other. Yeah. Yeah. That made sense to me a lot. I was like, <laughs> one of those things like where it came to me, it was like, that is the most profound right. thing I've ever thought. And now I'm not sure I understand it, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So did you, yeah. did you, did you end up uh, starting to study the law of one too? Or, or. Oh yeah. Of yeah. Course. How much, how, how much of the law of one have you read? Well, um, I'm always looking things up in the law of one. Okay. Um, 
you know, I have, I, I, I always go, Oh, I wonder what it says about this. And, um, but, uh, I listened to, to vast portions of it in a robot voice on YouTube <laughs> too. Um, I don't remember how much of it, but, uh, but uh, man, there's something to it to me. You know, I try not to take anything as like religious, you know, truth, but uh, there's something so weird about the law of one that it's, yeah. just, it's gotta be real, you know? Yeah, that's my feeling. I exactly, when I read that book, okay, first of all, I thought when I was a child, I saw the book and I was like, I have to read that someday. My you mind told me this as a child, yeah goes where you have to read that so then when it came into my field after i woke up the law i was like oh i have to read the law of one so i got myself in a mental place to do it and i started i started reading it and i swear to you steven it was like i was reading a book i wrote in another dimension it's exactly yeah. what it felt like like i wrote it like i was like i mean i just understood and it was speaking straight to me and i was just like this is my you know I think the thing that gets me about the law of one is that it is so it is so robust and it is so dense and so intricate and it's all complete off the cuff and this lady is just like blah 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 there's like out of no nothing just yeah. like and it's so like it's so um you can't make that up no and it's like no <laughs> in no place does it contradict itself it makes perfect like it's perfectly congruous yeah it's beautiful and it's so funny too like um like sometimes like she'll just be like in the wrong position and he'll be like ah not today come back tomorrow <laughs> right it's true channeling's a trip man because it's i mean it's our brains are computers, you know what I'm saying? And, sure. and they can, they're influenced by all kinds of different things that we don't realize. And that's how it works, you know? And there's a field we can all tap into. And it's just, we just don't get it on this level. We, on this level of the game, we right. don't get it. We're starting to perceive it, but not get it, you know? And to them, it's like, it's probably like trying to function underwater or something, you know? <laughs> like, uh, in, in um, like three layers thick of diving suits or something like <laughs> they're, they're um they're trying to interact with us but there's so much interference and they can't understand our puny minds and and sometimes the communication is suffering just because of that you know they'll be like i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> could, you, could you ask the question a little bit better yeah because they don't know what they're talking about. Like you have to be, or or like they'll just answer yes. Because of the 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 communication differences, like the way we understand language, it just so it's so exactly like it would be, if right. these higher D beings were trying to talk to us. Right. Yeah. They. And it's, they what I love. It's not dogmatic. It's, it's, it's right. it, it never do they tell you how you should live your life. Right. Yeah. Good point. That's why it resonates so deeply, I guess, or at least that's one level of it because they'll I, never go there. They'll yeah. never make it religious. No. Oh, how, I wonder how then it takes me down that rabbit hole of how, 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 how did they, why, you know, why were these books like the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita and all these, why were all these books placed on the planet? It seems like it's just confused them, but, but I don't think that was the intended purpose. You get what right. I'm saying? Sure. What do you, I mean, what do you think about that? Well, I don't think the Bible was ever intended to be a thing. Like it wasn't written as a book and we think of it as a book and it's either all or nothing but it's not like that. They were just scrolls. You know, it's a collection of scrolls that people put together in the middle ages and told us this right. is the Bible. But there's all kinds of reasons why people would write a scroll and probably some of them are channeled material. That's what I was just going to say. So do you yeah. think they're channeled? The, the, all those books are channeled material or most of them? Ones probably are. Yeah. That's what uh, I think. 
probably prophecy. I do too. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, just me and I don't do that. Like I, I don't remember that. I don't remember my dreams. Right. Mm -hmm. Except for prophecies. Okay. Mm -hmm. But right. I'm allowed to remember those. I mean, that's just a trip. Like I had a vision of the event, you know, like right. speaking of trips, like the scrolls that were taken <laughs> by, uh, who was it? Like, uh, was it John the um, the Apostle or, or whoever wrote? John uh, the Baptist? The, Which the, John, the or John? Uh, John that wrote Revelation. It wasn't John the Baptist. Oh, okay. But he took scrolls, like he ate scrolls and then saw these visions. Like what were those scrolls? Were the, was this a some kind of a uh, psychedelic uh, trip? Right? Yeah. It, oh. Second. yeah that's crazy but I, I i i i don't know i i look at it totally differently like the bible i used to read it you know a little bit when i was in sunday school when i was younger mm. and i read it now and it's like uh it's like looking at a different book yeah well I, to me it's it's never been more relevant since yeah. I detached from the, see, I've been reading the Bible since I was a little kid. So like, right. when, um, I didn't grow up in a religious family. Um, my first memory was oddly enough being baptized at six months old, um, and I don't know how that happened, but I, but I, but I woke up like when I was six months old and saw my saw stained glass window. I was in a German cathedral, and. Uh, being baptized, water poured over my head, six months old. And, um, and I, I've always kind of had this, um, this spiritual, like, I feel like it kickstarted this spiritual journey. Uh, sec second memory was a bullfight in Spain. And I, and I saw uh, um, death. I was like under two years old, but I saw oh. the bull dying. And, and um, I think I started asking these really deeply spiritual questions from time I was a little kid and they kind of haunted me and scared me. And, um, but my family was not religious like at all. They were good people, like good moral people, not religious at all. But I was always asking religious sorts of questions, looking at the stars going, what is that? What's out there? Who made that? Why? And, uh, and I became obsessed with like um, with the gods. Like uh, like when I was very young, I, I became obsessed with um, the movie. Um, what was that movie? Uh, Clash of the Titans. Ooh, me too. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so like you know the way they're kind of like playing with people, like they're like gods are are kind of playing with people, like they're toys or something. Right. And this and. So in my mind, I mixed it all up with the Bible. To me, it was all like the same. And now I think it probably is in a way. But, uh, but back then I was like, okay, I want to go to church. So like, I thought I was going to discover these answers. So my mom started like letting me go to church <laughs> when I was a little kid. And, um, and I started seeking, um, seeking the truth um, through that route and i think i got to a certain point and realized that uh and i've like deeply studied the bible like a lot of my life mm -hmm. uh, so so i have a lot of a lot of uh knowledge about it in a way um but eventually i just kind of learned that that church was kind of like training wheels it was like it got me so far and it was like this little box and people's people didn't like the questions I was asking and it was kind of like hey stay right here inside the box uh, but that was good and wasn't good enough for me um so oh uh, you asked about the dinosaurs too didn't you <laughs> well, I asked about uh, aliens and um <laughs> all of it uh yeah uh, other planets and everything you're not supposed to ask but but then something occurred to me like when I realized Heaven is space. Okay, the word yeah. for heaven is the same word, like the word heaven meant outer space. Mm -hmm. Then it just changes everything. Right. The heavens are the planets. Mm -hmm. um, 
to realize that the word God comes from several different words. Mm -hmm. The it, 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 Elohim is plural. Right. You realize that the Bible is teaching multiple things that 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 it calls God. Mm -hmm. To realize that not one person wrote the Bible, but all these people wrote the Bible. Mm -hmm. They're jamming it all together like just look at these ones and don't look at all these other books. Mm -hmm. What's in the other ones? Yeah, <laughs> I think, I think the, way they, <laughs> the way they put it together, the way they pieced it together, that was their agenda, right? But if you just read all of it all over the planet and with an open mind, you'll figure out what's going on. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, if you pray for discernment, you're seeking discernment and truth and you just study these books with an open mind and no attachment to the outcome i think you can discover the truth that's right, right? yeah that's right um and then uh i think just a, a, about a year ago i read the uh what is it called the sefer yetzera or something like that um the the uh is like the the uh it was a jewish um mystic book about it was like a different creation idea, but, uh, but it was talking about, um, like how the word there's, there's the, their Trinity is, is, uh, it was the written word, the spoken word and math. Okay. Numbers. And, and that, that God is in these three things. And that's, and that's where the idea of the word, like the, in the beginning was the word. Yeah. And, uh, and then, um, okay, then this, then I had this revelation. Okay. So people always tell you, they say, um, all scripture is inspired. Okay. And so like, if you talk to a Christian, they'll tell you that means all of the Bible is inspired, but no, all writing is inspired. So then it changes everything because God is in all writing. Right. Every time somebody writes a word, that word is inspired. Yep. Words are inspired. God is in words. Art, all of it. Right. God is us. It's the it's the it's the consciousness yep. that yes. we're using to speak with. Yeah. And We're on connect. the same page. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so th it's, it's, it's beautiful, really. I mean, the, the sacred geometry and, the, and the, the design of it all is just, I don't know, that blew my mind. Still does every day, right? Yeah. That's right, yeah. yeah and yeah. and, and uh, that's where God is. That's, it's in, the, the, yeah. in, in that... In that uh, self-awareness that we that we create from absolutely i am <laughs> yes that's cool so um so i want to ask you a little bit about like your background um as far as art just period though just a little bit about your background can you go into that just a little bit sure um so i was i was i was essentially born an artist I was a little kid, um, always somehow knew I was an artist. And, uh, but uh, I guess kind of every artist says that, but um, I started out really wanting to be an animator. And, and, uh, and then I was making my own comics when I was a kid. Um, but I was also oil painting. So I, so I started taking oil painting lessons when I was 12 and, uh, and, and, um, creating oil paintings from like, uh, I, would, I would make an oil painting from like a National Geographic page of, of an animal or something um, from a little kid. I was doing still lifes and things like that, um, charcoal drawings. Uh, and so I always had this kind of love for both, both like graphic art or illustration, commercial art and, um, and the finer stuff like the, you know, um, traditional painting. Um, and, uh, so when I was, when I was, uh, 
I went to art school for both. I, I kind of studied illustration and uh, and traditional painting. Uh, I studied with some of the greatest living painters. Um, Nelson Shanks uh, one of my, uh, um, and, and sorry, this is later in life, um, painted Margaret Thatcher, um, Ronald Reagan, the oh, Pope, yeah. uh, Princess Diana. Um, I just kind of sought out the best teachers that I could. Stephen Assell was one of my teachers. Um, we're just world-class painters, Max Ginsburg. And so I just sought out the best teachers that I could and became the best painter I could be. Um, but all the time I, I had kind of a, 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 a love for comics and, and uh, for cartooning and things like that too. And so, I, but I gave about 13 years of my life to, to the more kind of classical traditional um, art. And, uh, and then, but, and then I think with, with the awakening, I kind of like, I feel like a lot of my, a, a lot of my ego was, was kind of trapped in this persona that I built around myself as like a classical, um, you know, big shot painter. And um, it was stifling me a lot. And I think when I let go of that, when I let go of that image, like I had to fit into this mold as being this serious, um, celebrated painter, painting for posterity. Um, then that's when the fun happened. And that's when I think cool opportunities opened up and I allowed myself to have fun again, like I did when I was a kid making comics. And, and uh, that's where the Corey Good stuff um, came in. Well, yeah, I don't think, I think we lost our track, but you never did say kind of how we went down through the story, but how you actually ended up meeting him mm. and coming and coming to, to, to work for him or to, you know, you, I mean, you told me about the, I don't know if we were recording yeah. or you told me about that, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so I, I, uh, when I went down that, when I found the, uh, Corey Good rabbit hole, <laughs> um, which, which, this is a gift that keeps on giving <laughs> more and more and more and more. Yeah. Uh, but, and, and it's like, even now, even like last week, he had another meeting with the Anshar. Right. You know, it's like, this is like a gift to me. Like I get to keep painting or, you know, drawing these experiences um, right. as they happen. Um, but uh, you know, the story itself, it's like goes on for, a hundred years or something because of the time travel element and the right but uh but what am i saying um anyway i started following them on twitter and uh dming them being like hey look at this you know i'd kind of like what do you think about this blue avian and uh and so uh eventually they were like i guess they saw that like as a traditional painter I was trying to make like a, I was making these charcoal drawings of what I thought a blue avian was like. And I was, and I was terribly wrong, but, uh, but they saw something in it. Like I was kind of breathing personality into it as a portrait artist. Mm -hmm. And they kind of saw a spark there that, that they were interested in in a different take. Um, and so uh, I started doing free work for them for um, conferences and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think they just, they're, they're, they sort of developed a trust with me that I was going to take every project very, very seriously and aim to please them. And that I had a, like a passion for it. That, so, that's, that. so that's how you met him. Had you watched, I mean, what year was this? How long ago was this? It was just like, I think it was, uh, it went longer ago. It was like 2016. I started talking to him. I think it was still in New York. Had you watched any of Cosmic Disclosure? Had had any of it even come yeah. out yet? Yeah, oh, yeah. So but you I watched had, it? Yeah, a fiend of con Cosmic Disclosure. <laughs> like watch, <laughs> like, right? Back to back to back to back. Yeah, just like <laughs> ah! <laughs> just like drugs. <laughs> oh my gosh! I think a whole lot of us did that. Yeah. I did that with wisdom teachings too. Me too. I went straight binge, just because, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. was on that one for a while. <laughs> yeah, and and to be honest, like a lot of that's over my head. But I I catch as much as it 
as I can. And I, I, like while I'm working, I'm, I'm always listening to something, always, yeah. always listening to something to learn. And I get different perspectives like, you know, I'll listen to um, George Nori and things like that too. Um, I think it was a lot, I used to be a lot more open-minded in fact. And I think more and more I'm kind of like, maybe a bad thing, but I'm kind of closing up and, right. and I'm, I'm getting more skeptical because I know there's a lot of infiltration. Right. So, yeah. Well, what made you, what made you believe what I I'm so curious what this is with other people, especially when I talk to people like you, because, mm -hmm. because me, you know, I, I've, I've had too many experiences that connect me. Right. So have I. It, it's not even, it, it's not even a question of it, it you know, anymore of no. do you believe Corey good. No. Oh, yes. Yeah. I like, think more and more, uh, uh, even I believe Corey good more than when I started working for him. Um, yeah, Corey's solid. Right. And I'm just discovering that more and more, the, the more I work with him, uh, the more I am convinced Corey absolutely is experiencing this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the questions, the opportunity to really pick his mind. It, and, 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 you know, it's like, like I was saying about the law of one, it's just so robust and it's so right. interconnected and he does not miss a beat. You know, anything you want to ask him, right. all those fibers interconnect and they're just right. You know, it's like something doesn't make sense. It feels <laughs> off. Right. And you're like, oh, hang on. And he settles it for you. You know, it's just like so sweet and beautiful, right. like how, how it all fits in, how it all interlocks and dovetails. And yeah, the more right. information you get, and more, the more it fleshes out, the more beautiful and simple it is, you know? Yeah. Like, it's, he's, like I was saying, like an a, audience, like um, Corey, when he, like when you draw something that Corey explains, he'll be like, yeah, it's kind of close. And then you'll be like, well, where am I getting it wrong? And the more he explains it to you, and you, the more you flesh it out, the better and better and more beautiful it looks, the more elegant it looks. Right. The, the, and, and, and you're thinking, um, like, if he was making this up, he would have to have all these amazing designs in his head. Because right. the, the more you get it tailored to his explanation, his description, the more beautiful it becomes. And so you'd have to have, like, a background in aircraft design, <laughs> in um, Tierra design, all these things, in like character design. Right. I mean, he, he would have had to live 320 and backs just to have the, the know-how to, to do these things. I get it. That was my struggle, man. When I was watching Cosmic Disclosure, I, I remember just watching it being like, I know this guy's telling the truth, but if he's telling the truth, that means everything that I've ever believed about the reality is complete BS. <laughs> and I've been ran game on and I am a sucker, right? Yeah. That was what I had to come to terms with, not mm -hmm. as Corey Good telling the truth. I had to come to terms with... But don't you love yeah. it? <laughs> don't you love having your whole paradigm blown like that yeah because we always knew when we were kids we covered this that we used to get books on ufos and bigfoot and aliens and and it's because we always like knew on some level like yeah right you know our and our reality is so weird like the bigfoot thing okay like these beings clearly exist people have had interactions with them blah 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 blah, blah. but yet it's still like this obscure thing in our culture that we don't want to admit to like it's not like it's like this level of the game is weird, man. I'm telling you, it's weird. The things that go on and we pay no attention to it, we're under mind control, that's obvious. I yeah. mean, we don't even, we're like, okay, we're not supposed to think that that's okay. Right. And it's, we just go along yeah, with it's it. It's like you have this programmed giggle when, <laughs> when topics come up. But man, they're not a joke. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think you were asking about the skepticism though, like, um, and I think uh, 
the 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 more I sort of go, uh, there's so many people coming in and saying like, um, I'm a super soldier. I'm an, I'm another whistleblower and another one, another one, and uh, and I and I think it doesn't always check out, and. Um, And so I'm getting, I'm just getting a little bit, you get burned here and there and, and you go, okay, maybe. Um, and I like hearing the stories and, and I go, okay, that's cool. But I'm a little bit less likely to um, get excited, you know, about each new story. There's people that I meet and I go, yeah, like I really do like, um, like I've, like uh, I love talking to uh, I love talking to Desiree, and you know she's always got something. Wow, yeah, something trip. something cool happening. Exactly, <laughs> you nailed it, pretty much. Yeah, yeah I'm and telling you, when we like, used to meditate, she's not, to, huh? she's not looking for attention. No. She's not to impress anybody. No, this is really her reality. I always yeah. like when I started working with Corey, I, I like. I wake up with fingers crawling around on the back of my head. I'm like wide awake and there's something feeling around on the back of my head and nothing there. Really? Was, Tell me about this. Um, that happened once. Um, what do you think I, it was? I have no idea. Um, but um, in, in, it's always in this house. I'm at my friend's house and it's always, it's always in the same spot. Like I, I, I wake up in the same spot and uh on uh, the same side of the bed and uh one night finger is never at my own place but one night f uh, yeah one morning f broad daylight fingers feeling around on the back of my head like like uh my um, the uh what's it called the um oh uh i don't know a little knot on the back of your head i can't remember the name of it but uh then another then uh um uh, what do you call it? sleep um paralysis. paralysis broad daylight i wake up and i can't move my eyeballs oh. and and uh and i and it's like it's it's and and just just like they say like there's something over in the corner that i think is alive and like eight feet tall and uh and it's like oh this is sleep paralysis all right and, sleep. and then um Another night, it was like, um, oh, the weirdest thing happened. This was just like a month ago, same spot, and um, I'm, and so I wake up humming, okay, and my friend is humming too, um, and and uh, <laughs> my mouth, my teeth are vibrating. Um, intensely and my head and my chest and it's like a wave going like this right mm -hmm. hence vibration and um and then but then at the same time i'm hearing something whirring like out it sounds like almost like a hum but it's all, also sounds almost like a choir of angels or something but like a, a but like a steady tone so it's like and but it's outside. It's not inside. And, but I'm, but as, so I stop humming, but this vibration in my teeth, in my skull, in my chest keeps waving like this. And I get on, I pick up my phone to see if anybody else is experiencing this. I was like, right. nobody else says anything on Facebook about it. I thought, oh, this is it. <laughs> um, you know, I thought it was like Ascension time or something. Um, right but uh but no nobody else was experiencing it and um but as it was about 20 minutes and as the sensation dies down the sound outside dies down in unison with the vibration until what do you think it was no idea yeah, no idea no idea no and i couldn't even step to trying to guess at what that might be i don't i don't guess what i don't know and i just have no idea right. 
I saw an alien one time, like woke up seeing a gray standing next to the bed through the side of my head. So have you been abducted by the grays or anything no like, like that happened to you? I have no idea. Yeah, but, but all I know is when I stand, but it was like, it, it, I wasn't, none of it's scary to me. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't feel afraid of any of it. Hmm. How long ago did this happen? So you woke up and saw a gray in your room, just chilling, looking at you? Through, through the side of my head. Um, um, so I, so I can't say, um, I say that's less of a tangible experience because I didn't right. see it in my own. But um, what else? There was another weird thing here. Um, a crash. So like I was, so I was lying in bed at the same spot, not at my own place. And in, in like, it was like an armload of dishes. Like somebody just went crash over, like right over my head. So loud. Um, and so I leap out of bed and scream and nobody hears me nobody heard the crash nobody heard the scream um my friend is sleeping and uh nobody hears it wow yeah i um yeah and the more i think of it like the more things um i was saying yeah nothing weird happens to me like oh except that thing and that thing and that thing. right i straight up feel like my life is a cartoon man i do <laughs> like it's really been that bizarre. I mean, it and just two different levels of bizarre too. Cause then there was like the first portion of time. And then there was like, you know, how bizarre things have gotten since I woke up spiritually. Mm. Uh, just so have you had ET like experiences or, or, well, or like that? mine have just been abstract and weird and not really like, any in the physical, but I had like a, my, I, my pineal gland, whatever you would, it de decalcified, opened, whatever it did it. And it happened extremely quickly for me. And I could just start to, I could perceive things I couldn't perceive before. I just, it was like getting superpowers one day. It was really cool, actually. Mm -hmm. And nothing to do, nothing to do with um, psychedelics or anything? No, I never took them. Huh. No, I just, I just, like, remember I told you I could see everything was alive? I could just see it one day? Well, that happened with food, too. Like, I started looking at food, wow. and I could see the energy attached to it, and I was like, ooh, I don't want that, you know? And I just, my diet just dramatically shifted to something completely different than what it was before. Yeah. And I don't know. I just, I got all these abilities. I, could, I, was, I never was a medium. I could never talk to people that had passed away. But after this, I started getting messages from people that I'd lost. And I was like, wow. I started getting information when I would touch people. Hmm. And I was like, it freaked me out, man. I didn't, I didn't, all this happened to me at one time. Like all it's these things. Same, same. It was like all at once. Mm -hmm. So like, right. So at the same time that all these events, like all, most of those events I mentioned, they were like within a month um, span. Right. And, um, and at the same time, I would just get like, I'd be meditating and I would go, boom, I'd see a picture of somebody doing something and I text them and that's exactly what they were doing. Like, I, I, I was, I have a friend who, um, you were who, remote uh, viewing. Yeah. And yeah. so, so, so I was, I was meditating and, um, this flash came through my head, somebody that I was just acquaintances with that I'd never talked to. And and um, and I, and I got this very clear image of her laughing and spinning in the woods, wearing a blue plaid shirt. Oh. And I told her this, and she was totally freaked out. Thought I was spying on her, like oh. thought I was like, hiding in the bushes or something. But it was right? like, she said, "Are you at uh, something, Kiwanis Park?" And I was like, "What? Where's that?" Um, I didn't even know what that was. Um, and then another time. It was, I guess all this, I was meditating and I saw this flash of um, my friend David and he was painting a, a sphere on an easel next to a female student. And um, it was like, so, and he was in, and Wait, I told a sphere him, rolled up on him while he was doing a painting. No, no, I was, he was doing a painting of a sphere. 
Okay, okay, okay. Okay, and so I texted him this. He said, LOL, and he showed me the painting. Oh. It, it was that in, in uh, Franklin, Indiana, and I was in Raleigh, North Carolina. Wow. These weird things. So that was, was the just, superpower was, you got is you realized you could remote view or you learned how or you whatever. Or just like the, it's just like the veil starts right back. It's not like a special ability. Right. It's just, Everybody can do all this stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's just and I don't know what, the, which change it was like my health, my diet, um, my habits, all these things, my thinking patterns. But then, it, but then I wonder like, did the little gray guy give me the abilities or something? Right. You know? That's what I think about the spa spaceship. Uh, the, the day that I, the day it came, I think, cause I was so different after that. It was like my DNA change. I don't know, man. I, cause I got right. all these abilities. What is the explanation for that? Cause I think it's like a spiritual explanation. I like a metaphys. I don't know. I'm tr still trying to understand it. But metaphysical stuff is just physical stuff that we don't understand. That, that we can't measure. Right. It's just it's yeah. like science. Right. It's like people used to think that, um, well, yeah, like, okay, uh, 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 I mean, like, um, they, they used to think that uh, um, we had uh, different fluids that, but then it turns out to be true, like different, different, uh, different fluids that determine our, our um, what do they call them, like our, um, our, uh, not our moods, our, um, yeah, I can't remember. But <laughs> Lost that one, huh? fumbled that ball, huh? No, it's true, it's true. <laughs> like, so, so people used to think that we had, um, what is that called? The different fluids, like, quant but, okay, the different spiritual fluids that move through our bodies, right? Right. And, and so they, they determined, like, whether we were sad whether we were happy um, and, and uh, whether we were angry. And then, uh, and, and, and then um, I think um, th there turns out to be actual evidence that we do have these quantum fluids that are affected by the heavenly spheres. So like, so like right. when, you know, when uh, Mercury's over here or something, it's, right. it, um, I guess, uh, affects, uh, so, so, so whatever you know makes us um, feel feisty or something right yeah I can't remember what they're called the um, somebody's somebody listening knows what it is like half the people listening right <laughs> just just not us at the moment <laughs> just not I so um, <laughs> that's funny so yeah I uh, <laughs> wow we have so many similarities in our uh, like awakening journey. It's crazy. I mean, right. big, t big are you, time. Are you ADD? Do you have ADD? No. No? No. I'm just a Scorpio. <laughs> hmm. It's not ADD. I'm, yeah. I'm, I can be obsessive. Um, yeah, I'm kind of hardcore and obsessive, but, but I'm not, I don't know. I don't have ADD. I've never, I've never had that. But, you know, I've got my other yeah. things about my personality quirks that are just as challenging, I think. Are you OCD? Yes. Or I was back before I started meditating. I was. Yeah, big time. I had anxiety. I was very OCD. Um, yeah. It, it's because, you, I, in my opinion, for me, it was like because you have no control or understanding of what's going on out here around you, you start to do that to to you know when you're a sleeper to to have some control over something so that you don't lose your mind i think yeah. is where that comes from yeah well, it's like the law of confusion like you you can only um like we're made to live in these 3d bodies like if we really woke up and out of 3d we would probably no right float, like melt you know dissolve we probably couldn't have our bodies anymore. Like right. earth is our home and we kind of have to keep coming back. <laughs>
we're only allowed to wake up so much, I think, before we before we uh, uh, default back to our our three D bodies. I don't understand where all these abilities came from so dramatically, so quickly. I mean, that thought alone can make you go down some rabbit holes trying to figure out how and why, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, didn't you trip out on all these weird things you could all of a sudden do that you didn't even know were possible before, let alone could do it? Right, well, like the like the clairvoyance stuff. Right. Like, um, like out of body. It's just like what? I just I just sunk through the floor. I'm in the lobby. Right. <laughs> Floating hey, around in I've, other people's apartments. <laughs> I've been trying to learn to astro project lately because I'm like, man, now that I know I can just cruise around and go to different planets and hang out with other beings and stuff, I'm like, I gotta do this. So I've been like, totally. Have you done it? No, I can't, it's I'm my mind is very controlling, like we just discussed. Okay, yeah. and it it's got to go through all these things before it's going to allow it. You know what mm. I mean? Like checklist, mm. you know, you think yeah. I'm bad. Meet my higher self. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? She's it's like, like, a, it's like a teacher. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's something else. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Runs a real tight ship. <laughs> See, um, okay. Like I've tried to, I've also tried to, um, like when I realized I can, um, I can, uh, what do you call it? Go out of body. I try to make a go, good, like do cool things. So you can do this and you do it all the time or what? No, I, it, I don't want to all the time. Like it's, but it's, you can do it. well, I mean, I feel like anybody can, but I feel like, I feel like my higher self like tells me don't do it most of the time. Like it's not the time. But like, I feel like early on when I was having these experiences, it was just happening. Like every time I meditated, I would like float into other people's apartments, float into the lobby. And then once I went all the way to Indianapolis and remote viewed my kids, um, like getting ready for school in the morning, Whoa. which was amazing. Like I, I, I floated into, it was like, it was like it was like a it was like learning a new um it was like learning a, a new video game controller. Like you know, when you're you're learning video game controls. Like I don't play video games, so it's like what? Okay, um, so it, how do you do it? I don't okay, so you gotta um, break it down. I mean for I people like me that wanna be it, wanna be able to do all this stuff easily. So I think it, it always comes with setting an intention and falling half asleep with me. I'm not saying it does that. It's that way for other people. Oh, okay. Like falling half asleep, but not all the way asleep. And it's just like, pop. And, but in that little, in How that little. How do you keep yourself from falling asleep? By, I fall asleep. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just like, I feel like in a certain, at a certain point of time, it was easier for me to access all of these, like this certain state of being where all these things would happen. But, but um, I feel like I'm not there now and it's not the right time. I feel like my life is too busy doing all these things. Mm -hmm. And I had a certain point of time where I had enough calm and, and, and enough time on my hands where I could reach these states of consciousness. But um, it's okay, like I think that was the right time then, and I'm at the right time I'm supposed to be now. But at that point, um, I started to try to even like, so past lives, um, but it was, it's funny because I'm always trying to do something a little bit cooler like go to another planet right. and end up in Indianapolis or something. Or like, I'm trying to get to a, like a past life um, on another star or something, but I go to like my childhood, you know, so like- You don't I'll have complete to, control over it. You, ha you yeah. ha Is that the frustrating part about it? Yes, but, but still really cool things happen. Like I'll, right. I'll it's like, I'll aim for, um, I'll aim for a past, like a past life on another planet, but I'll end up in ancient Maya. Like, right. 
like I'm 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 like like an ancient Mayan people, and I'm like on a I'm like on a pyramid, watching a guy blow a horn with feathers, and and another pyramid like blocks floating into place. And, and but it's like I wasn't even trying for that. I was trying for another planet. <laughs> Up, that's pretty cool man i know right that's something i've always wanted to see was them building that stuff in real time right um but uh, oh yeah, i but, did see something cool like that once actually now that i think about it i don't okay. even want to go into what it was but it's something like on that level of cool yeah okay yeah <laughs> go ahead it. sorry i didn't mean to interrupt no, but, like, but, it, but then i know it's real because then like shooting for a more recent past life, like, go, okay, what was our last life? And right. then so I was like, I'm not going to tell you that, but I am going to show you this thing from when you were like two or four. And, 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 and it's like so real. And it's like, oh, here's the, you're in the back of your grandfather's truck. Right. Um, and, and it's like, oh yeah, I totally remember that. It's something I never would have thought of again. Right. Or, or like, pushing around a little like a uh, popcorn mower toy, little things like that, that I never would have remembered, but they come in flashes just like the past life memories. You know, that's how, how it's, it's, that's like the, the way it's confirmation to me that it's something real. That's cool. Yeah. So tell us about the graphic novel and, um, well, we know kind of, well, kind of when it's coming out again and what, what all is going to be, in it what what is it going you know yeah so the first graphic novel is um is going to be called the programs and it's and it's all about and it's the cool thing for people i think the exciting thing is it's going to be covering a part of corey's uh journey that they haven't seen before so it's it's from it's spanning from his uh soul contract um, and I won't give away <laughs> that part of it. It's really cool. And it, so it's spanning from soul contract, birth, childhood, to um, when he first joins the 20 and back program. Oh, yeah. So, cool. so it's a lot of his childhood. Um, yeah, and, 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 and encounters with beings in the military uh, at very young ages. Very fascinating stuff. How many of these graphic novels are planned? Uh, well, three. that's one, three. Yeah. So there's three different series? So there's three different, there's a, tr it's going to, it's the, it's, it's concepted as a, as a trilogy. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So the first, the first of the trilogy is called uh, the programs. I believe it'll be about a hundred to hundred ten pages, and and uh, it's an entirely unique uh, project, um, a, as far as I understand, because because the 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 way that we're developing the artwork is um, every page is like cover art, so every page is taken to a full a fully rendered uh, digital painting, like it's cover art. Um, and, and, and as far as like, I'm not very, I don't follow a lot of graphic novels, but to me, I've never seen anything like it. Um, huh. So I think we're gonna be pleasantly surprised with, with the, the level that we're taking this thing. That's cool, I'm excited to see it. So are all three of them done right now? Or have you just finished? No. <laughs> no. So just one, like one series in, or what do you call it? One section of the yeah, of One, one uh, episode is uh, still in progress and it keeps sort of getting set back because of uh, meetings. But we're having more and more, like I said, more and more exciting people join the, prog the, join the process and, uh, we kind of keep rethinking it and making it a, a better and better um, product. So, so people who have pre-ordered it, I'm, I'm just so terribly sorry that it's, uh, we all are, um, but uh, just believe me, we're making it worth, your, worth the wait. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm excited that it's coming out. This is, this is 
this is major. I don't know. I see disclosure happening every day and I don't know, maybe, maybe that's my perspective, but I see it. I mean, it just, it seems like it keeps growing and growing and growing. At some point it's going to hit an exponential rate and people are just going to know. Yeah. So what happens then? I mean, does that trigger the, uh, the, the, the leap or I, I don't know how it all works, but that's what it feels like maybe will happen. Well, at least on a, 3D political level, level, I think people will start demanding the truth. Yeah, they, they, they already are. I'm seeing, you know, we, we, many countries have active protests going, oh, and then look what happened with Iran, Stephen. Well, they burned down the central bank, central bank. the Rothschild the zone. Bank. Yeah. I burned had, it down. I had dreams about that all night. <laughs> that's that's something there. Yeah. I mean, the people are people are revolting against the new world order around the whole globe right now. In Hong Kong, I think. Yes. Yeah. They got little green little signs with green frogs and um. Right. You know, Q movement. QAnon. Worldwide. Worldwide. Let's, just, let's be real. It's QAnon. Yes. Right. <laughs> QAnon has been successful in waking up the planet. Yeah. yeah. And. And uh, this is vastly, like, woefully underestimated. So yeah. I can try to blow it off as a, as a conspiracy theory, as a joke. Yeah, I love when they write those. Uh, those it's funny at this point, right? It's funny. <laughs> right. These, these people that want to talk shit on it, you know, and they, and they, yeah. and they want to call it a conspiracy theory. Or yeah. these, they refer to us. They have some name for us, these, these QAnon something. I don't know. They've got some derogatory name for us, and it's like... Yeah. Do you know what an idiot that makes you look like to even you guys put us down? Fun. Yeah. Right. Keep, like, laughing. keep laughing. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's, you, there's no denying it anymore. Like what's what the big question is, how come no one's asked Trump? How can the media just refuses That's to right. ask Trump? Who That's right. is? Yeah. Why don't you just uh, ask him? Right. Ask me. Uh -huh. Yep. It's all coming. I see it. Man. It's all coming. And the Trump it's just saying, gonna take time. Trump saying the other uh, a, a couple weeks ago, uh, nine, thirteen, seventeen, I M Q. Mm. Did, 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 you, did you see that? Uh, there's a video on YouTube where um, he says, uh, and you know, it's all it's always in, he always says seventeen somewhere. Oh. Yeah, he does. And, uh, and so he says, uh, he says in this speech, he says, uh, not, I think he says not nine years, not 13 years, but 17 years. I think it was years he was saying, but, but the, but the, but the thing is, he said nine, 13, 17 in sequence. I am Q. Wow. I'm Q. Yeah, he said it right there. It's like, is it YouTube? And then I tried to post it. YouTube blocked it yeah i tried to share that video and they banned it they will they will block you twitter will do the same thing they will find a way to remove your content that we're live this is all out orwellian stuff we got going on man With the censorship and the and the and the, the assault after the first amendment and this is and all and they're the doing is all they're doing is making our point yep literally yeah and we're becoming the news. Nobody, nobody listens to the news. I look at people like they're insane if they tell me they watch the news now. I'm like, <laughs> you do what? You watch the news, the mainstream news, and you uh -huh. think you're getting news that's truth? Uh-huh. Whoa. Yeah. But hey, you know. Well, let's just say they, they Look at the Epstein that. didn't kill himself meme. Right. I know Whoa. it. Whoa. Right? Yeah. That the went super day. viral. Even on the news, people are saying it. <laughs> yeah, it's so that meme old. went super viral. Mm -hmm. It's not done yet. We're the news now, period. I got, I got two. I don't even know how um, Facebook started detecting memes, but they banned, they, 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 <laughs> right. they blocked two memes I posted, two Epst Epstein EDK. IDK. <laughs> <laughs> like in a row that I posted, yeah. like, yeah. how did you find that? Why are you scared of me saying this? Right. Absolutely. And we're finding out every day, you know, more and more about how evil Google is and what their plans are. I always knew that though. That's why I call them, I call it, I call it Lord Google 
because, um, and I'm telling you, Google will start on its own. It'll say, what, what are you trying to say to me? I've never once spoken to Google on the phone. Mm. It'll just turn itself on and block me from doing whatever I'm doing and start asking me questions. So have you had trouble with your channel? Or is um, it too, is it too? Uh... Yeah, I, I've had trouble, but you know, I've, I've since secured things. I've, I've changed the way I do things and I've gotten a VPN and <clears throat> I've kind of changed the way I operate and it's made things a lot easier. Um, I used to have so much technical difficulties. I could, it was hard to get anything taped, but mm -hmm. uh, I've figured well, out how to. How long has your channel been? Uh, um, I started in what, September? Um, okay. but I didn't do anything for about, a uh, you know, a three week period of time. So it's really only been a couple months that I've been putting out content. It's a learning mm -hmm. process for me. You know what I mean? It's been a, it's been definitely been a learning process and it still is every day. You know, yeah. I had been away from doing anything media related for a long time when I started, uh, one foot in 5d. So really, yeah. you know, I'll get there. Did I tell you about my next door neighbor? No, I, no, this yes, is, no. This is crazy, okay? I don't want to say crazy, that's a bad word. Um, but, boy, would she be cool to get on your show. Um, okay, so she actually moved back to Brooklyn. But, um, so, okay, so I'm, how weird is this? So, so I, I, I was um, living next to this woman um, on the other side of my wall for, for like a year before or two years before before we had this conversation. It was probably a year. And um, she moved to Brooklyn. She, she moved from Brooklyn. I moved from Brooklyn at the same time. We're probably neighbors in Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> but um, but um, I, I, I walked out with the, I walked out into the hall um, with a, with a, with my Corey Good, um, with my Sphere Being Alliance, um, with a 20 page, uh, comic teaser that we made for uh for um contact in the desert a few years ago or two right. years ago i walk out in the hallway with this okay mm -hmm. and she says what's that and i said it's a it's a um comic book um and, and uh so we get in this conversation what's it about um aliens and space travel and uh, and she's like you, you know, know this Remember that post? It's way weirder than that. Yeah. <laughs> Who made that post? Who was that? <laughs> it's some weird. Yeah, it was was like, that you? Was that you? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is some real bizarre, bizarre stuff. <laughs> that happens all the time. I go, um, they're like, what's your graphic novel about? And I'm like, oh, something weird. And they're like, every time they go, they go, was it like BDSM? And I'm like, oh. No, way weirder. <laughs> <laughs> like, <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> and their minds are going crazy. They're like, what's crazier about that? Right. <laughs> hey, meet me, Corey Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I'm holding this thing, and she's like, you know, that stuff's real, right? And um, and so, so she is. She hasn't followed any of this. She doesn't know. She didn't know who Corey Good was. She wasn't following any YouTube channels, nothing. And she is going on and on and on about all of it: reptilians, <laughs> um, Arcturians. Um, that, but she doesn't know the names of these things, and she's describing them to me. These things she's seen, and I'm like, yeah. And she's she's thinking I'm going to think she's crazy, and. I'm like, I know about all of this. And so we get to where- You're talking like, to the perfect person. You have no idea. <laughs> I can't, I can't Funny. even, I avoid her in the hallway because I know like when I don't have time, we're gonna end up talking for three hours in the hallway. Right. Because there's so much. And um, yeah, and so I wanna, she's moved back to Brooklyn and I wanna try to get her on edge of wonder. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Get her talking to those guys because she's got she's just like it's amazing like the stuff that she knows <laughs> she know all the stuff that Q is saying like uh she she's, she's corroborating 
she right. doesn't even follow Q. She doesn't even know who Q is. No, Q was. Right. But she was telling it. She was telling it to me and two friends, like, and we're like, and you don't know, you don't follow Q. And she's, but she's getting all this information from the field or something. But she's on the astral. Right. It's incredible. Right. Yeah, I wish I could remember my dreams because stuff goes on, like, cool stuff goes on, like, super cool, right? Mm -hmm. And I've tried to set the intention, like, higher self, look. You need to let me remember my dreams, man. This isn't cool. I'm getting tired of this. getting tired of being stuck in 3D all the time. Do you write it down? Are you journaling? I can't, I can't remember. They don't let me remember. I, re I remember one Corey was in, though. I remember one of those. I, there's me, and I remember I, before I met Ben and Rob, I had a dream about them. Oh, is that right? Is, yeah. Yep. And I didn't even know I was going to meet them, you know, oh, at that time. At C Cosmic Waves in Hawaii, but they weren't on the, they weren't on the thing at the time when mm. i first signed up to go and made plans to go they, they they got added at the very end of that conference and okay. ended up going so i didn't even know they were going you know and i had a dream about them and it's interesting because rob was one of the first people i met at cosmic waves mm. so it's like my higher self uh it was about the epoch times and them anyway yeah. my, it's like my higher self was telling me then that's the other time i'll remember dreams right if they're prophecies or if it has something to do with my mission and something, they need me to pay attention because I'm stubborn. So yeah. I'll be allowed to remember just a snippet to tell me, pay attention to this person right now, right here. Cause they're yeah. like important to the mission or there's some kind of like connection you need to pay attention to. I think cause yeah. my higher self knows I'm stubborn. Yeah. You yeah. know, <laughs> I, had, I had Corey dreams. Uh, before I started working with Corey, but I kind of dream about everybody, so. Right, well, that's cool. I don't, yeah, I wish I could do, you know, cause this place gets intense, you know, and you can do cooler stuff there. I don't know, I can do some cool stuff here too though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can do whatever there, you know, you don't have that, those limitations of like the physics here, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. You, 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 uh, you spend time on the astral? Do I? Yeah. They don't let me remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I remember snippets enough to know that I was there and who I was kicking it with, but I won't remember enough to really like interpret what, what it was all about. It's very frustrating. Yeah. I feel like not all dreams are the same. Like if, I feel like some dreams are, are actually something happening like on, on, on the astral right. or out of right. body or something. And I think some of it, some of it's like remote viewing, and then some of it's just nonsense, like stupid. Like I, I had a blue avian dream the other night. It was just dumb. It was like, <laughs> was it like a contact dream or like a dream? Just a dream dream. It was like it. a, it was like a dumb dream about like, there's like a blue avian standing in our living room um, with my ex-wife, and I was like, I was like, uh, I was also a blue avian, but I was like, I was five feet five, like I am. And, yeah. uh, and it was like, I knew I wasn't a blue alien, but I was, but I was like stuck all with feathers, like Jim Carrey in the um, <laughs> Grinch costume. Oh, that's but rich. I was like, I was like photobombing um, the blue aliens, making the hand signal. And my ex-wife is like, <laughs> taking pictures. Oh it was like so that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the blue avian dream that you want to be having. <laughs> wow, that's intense, man. I can imagine. Yeah, dreams are so abstract and weird, right? Yeah, like, sometimes they're just stupid. <laughs> they're just like... They're embarrassing you know, to talk about. Right, exactly. And you're like, how did I benefit from that? What, 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 what was that all about, you know? They are, they're a trip. Dreams are a trip, definitely. But I want to find out more about this remote viewing thing. Like, mm -hmm. you and I don't know each other very well. And okay. so this is like completely news to me that you've had these experiences with remote viewing so could you just like i don't know go into that a little more like some of the cool stuff you've seen while you were doing it and were you trying yeah. to do it or was it totally accidental or yeah. okay so um so only once no twice twice have i directed it okay and and got accuracy so uh weird stuff man weird stuff okay but one um one of them is kind of 
one's kind of Q related, um, but, uh, 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 but, but okay, but no one. Um, so, so once I was going to see a movie, um, and I don't want to plug the movie, um, but uh, I was going to see a movie tomorrow. Um, and so I, I, I'm seeing the movie with the family and next to me is a 10 year old boy. And, um, but, the, but, but the, night, the night before I said, I'm gonna remote view, view that movie. I'm gonna see a scene from that movie. And so I did, I meditated and I saw, and I wrote it down, I emailed it to myself. And I saw, and I wrote down, camera panning up a fireplace to a mirror on the mantle and panning right, okay? And not only did that scene pop up in the movie, but I tapped the shoulder of the 10 year old boy next to me and I said, I knew when it was coming. Cause, it, cause the scene was kids were standing at a door and I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, watch this scene. I'll tell you why later. Yeah. And door opens, camera pans up the fireplace to a mirror on the mantle, pans right, exactly like I emailed myself the night before. Um, cool. We got dead accuracy. Um, let me think what this other instance was. Um, I started doing like, not automatic writing, but listening to the little voices when you're waking up in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, I guess this isn't Q exact, it kind of is, but it's, it's the whole, um, so, so I was listening to, listening to those little like murmurs and I don't know, I'm like the worst politics person. Like I don't follow current events. Like uh, I'm terrible at it. And I don't know, like, I don't follow politicians. It's just so boring to me. Like, unless until it gets exciting and then you're like, Oh yeah, let's go. But, but um, once you understand it's all optics, if, there's no point watching it. It's already, right. the game's already played out. We're just watching the. Yeah, but you know, it's always nice to have somebody like Jordan Sather, who's like very savvy and on top of on top of the current events. But I'm just not that guy. Um, right. Uh, but, uh, but so I'm, I'm hearing these things, and so I write down a name that's morphing around in my brain, and I write down. David Dunes, okay? <laughs> I write this down, David Dunes. I'm like, what is that? And then I go downstairs. I, li I live in a high rise. I go downstairs, there's a coffee machine. And I glance at the TV screen, at the ticker. And the first thing I see is Devin Nunez on the, on the uh, TV screen. When That's I'm making, weird. Before you even it, said that, I kn knew you were going to say that. That's strange. Yeah. Go ahead. And I had no idea who he was. And then I went and I wrote that down knowing that was going to be something important. Well, and it turns out it is a very like Im important name right. in, the, in the political thing that's happening. So right. very interesting. Like in the whole, um, you know, Russia hoax. Right. Yeah. So pretty cool. Yeah, the whole thing is, it's, it's, it's a trip. I, it's worse. I'm so grateful to, I mean, it's crazy, but to be living in the middle of a revolution, like literally a global revolution, not just like a revolution in one country, yeah. a global purge of evil and a revolution. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just imagine how it's going to get at That's a right. point. Yeah. Where, when every single person knows. Is demanding their freedom yeah whoa i mean it's a deep thought man uh -huh. and demanding our world back from from a handful of evil uh, people yeah yeah they're done though their time's done you right. know it's, it's just a matter of getting everybody else on the level where they understand that we we have the we have the ball yeah so let, let's yeah. go ahead and let's run with it and Let's nail it and get a touchdown here. And it's so hard to, it's so, even knowing all that, we've, we've lived in this state for so long, it's so hard to imagine it. Any is, other way. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. to, to really believe it. But, uh, yeah, but it really, things do really seem to be changing. And then and you think through it and you go, there's no way this can't change. There's it no way to. it's not changing. Yeah. There's too much energy behind, there's too much momentum behind the movement now. There's too much. If there's no way. If it doesn't change in the next four years, it's going to be in our lifetime. Something profound is going to change. If, if Trump doesn't change it, we're changing it. Yeah, one or the other, mm -hmm. if, yeah. or both, or whatever. Right. Or maybe we'll get nailed in a couple of years and we'll jump, you know, the mm -hmm. energies will, allow, but I think right. we got to go, we got to, I think we got to go through this revolution. This yeah. is it. We, humanity has to stand up and say, we're done. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. We're moving we, on. We reject, to an, this, right. we reject this pollution. All of uh, it. We reject this money. That's yeah. where we're going. But, but I think the hard, the hard thing about it is the, uh, it is hard to picture the destabilization uh, scenario. And I think that's the, that's the part that can get scary when I think through it. Well, that's why we need the military. You know, we need, we need, we need the citizens well, in the U.S. I don't, yeah, I don't know. We need ascension. We need ascension. We, we need everybody to get on the same page or get off the planet. That's right. I don't know. <laughs> is that being too blunt? Or get off the planet ourselves or inside <laughs> the planet. Get Something, the planet. man. Something's yeah. got to give it a point. You know, like I'm not living on a plan planet with Satanists that sacrifice and eat children. I'm not doing it. Or pedophiles. They got to go somewhere else. They can do it. They have free will, but they're not doing it where I live. You know, right. I don't know. That's just how I feel. So. And I always go back to that thing that Q says, uh, nothing can stop what is coming. No. no. No, it's going to reach critical mass. And they already seen, yeah. you know, with looking glass, they, they already seen that's right. that the timelines right. converge and we ascend. That's it. That's we go through the, the shift. That's, that's what happens, man. So catch up and let's, let's get there. You know, like. I'll tell you what, that's something else I've known since I was a little kid. Right. Me too. Worldwide shift. Like yes. always. Yes. Me I was too. in the cafeteria in like the fifth grade going like, something's gonna happen <laughs> like all this stuff in revelations is gonna happen in my in my lifetime this lifetime right. yeah i always just kind of knew as a kid yeah, yeah but exactly. now i know it's not gonna be in a in a in a negative. bad way no it's not a negative thing like like we were told it's it's a totally beautiful great thing yeah right yeah that's cool yeah well I just want to tell everybody that, um, yeah, that uh, I am I am on your team, and uh, and uh, uh, I think a lot of people are concerned that uh, as Corey brings in people uh, to work on these entertainment projects, that it'll get watered down and um, infiltrated, and it's very much not happening. Everybody involved in the project is is uh, on your side. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's picking good people who are who are um, yeah who are on our team. That's cool. Yeah, and they're coming from the entertainment industry, and uh, and and uh, but they're they're people who have who have crossed over into into working for Disclosure instead of working for Hollywood. You know why I think they call they call it a cult and why they do what they do? It just came to me because there's such unity and love among us and we have each other's back kind of thing. Yeah. Like there's 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 loyalty and I think they just don't understand that. And so they they've twisted it into oh it's the blue chicken cult. Well, but I think it can be. I think it's I think it's it's only a hair off of being a cult and I think we just have <laughs> we have to keep in that zone like we have to constantly guard i think there are a number of you see people just blindly defending um anything i think we have to constantly be questioning ourselves i think it's, it's always important to go to vet ourselves to vet each other right. um so that it doesn't become something religious you know right. um, and, and uh, Law of One warns against that. Blue Avians warn against that. Corey Absolutely. Warns, you can't let it become a religion. 
Right. And I think we always have to go, how do I know this? How do you know this? And a lot of people think I'm being some kind of a, um, like a, um, <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah. Like some kind of a downer for, for not, you know, um, for being a little bit on the skeptical side with things, but, but, um, but oh, I think it's healthy. Yeah. I think you have to have a, a healthy measure of skepticism and go, I'm going to have to, that that's going to have to present itself to me in a way that I get it, you know? Right. So I think that's, that is the, that's the layer of, that's the protective layer um, that keeps me from cult land. Right, I think. The truth yeah. has to, it has to ring true to your... Absolutely. To, to your inner or higher self or whatever. And know? it's real. I'm, I'm really happy for you that you get to do, you know, however it came about and however it happened, that you get to do your disclosure passion. And yeah. I get it because I know how it feels. You get to do that. Now, and that's just, that's amazing yeah. i can't even imagine my my um fortune or my you know my uh my luck of be, being able to be a part of this thing i see as joy being in our future not money like you do things because it's what makes you happy and like the money system just goes away like i don't even see it like it just goes away and everybody's doing what they love. They're doing their, their, I don't know what the word is, their passion, the, the thing that, you know, I don't know. It just, just working out of love, just pure Definitely. love. And yeah, it, it goes, there's something that goes way beyond the hours that I put into it. Right. Um, yeah. That's beautiful. I stopped counting the hours um, that I'm, that I'm putting into it and, and it becomes just, um, it, it uh, becomes, it's part of my, it's my, like my, 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 uh, my play, my work, my uh, rest, it's all kind of becomes the same thing. I'm working on it because it's fun uh, in my free time. Right. All right. So tell us real quick again, when can we expect to finally see the first in the trilogy of the graphic novels? Yeah, I'm not making any promises, but um, but we're but we're um, the the new um, the new plan is to release it in spring 2020. Spring 2020, and then what are gonna what? How long in between each one's release? Do you know at this point or no? I have no idea. You don't know. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on and talking to me today, Stephen. You were like super awesome to talk to. Lots of. Well, I hope that I didn't. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I hope I wasn't uh, too, too, uh, like, um, too much. <laughs> no, you're great. Like you're too, but just, you know, you're great. You and I are just totally present and just doing it. And sometimes you lose your train of thought and sometimes you get stuck on stupid. But you know yeah. what? Like, it's, it's all good. That's mm -hmm. just part of the deal, right? Yeah, that's who I am. And that's why I never watch them. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I, I'm sorry. I couldn't stop laughing the whole the whole time. I mean, I really you had me rolling on the ground. I could yeah, not yeah. stop laughing. Yeah. Then maybe maybe the home viewers will be entertained too. Right. Let's hope. All right. Mahalo, my friend. All right. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Bye.